day guys welcome back hi i'm gonna do a pour for you today yay a flip cup pour um in sort of teals and greens i've got a dark teal a light teal and i've got a dark green and a light green a couple of whites and we're gonna flip them over and see what happens because it's been quite a while since i've done one now i've got a couple of dry things for you this one here, this was um, blues and browns. So it turned out really nicely, really like that. Um, quite small cells though. I don't know, I don't know what's happening. My cells seem to be smaller lately. I don't know whether the, um, the new Montmartre paint is maybe a little bit thicker than what it normally is. Um, but anyway, that's that one. And then I've got one that was the group challenge, the Pouring Your Heart Out Facebook group challenge, which was kind of wintry colours. Blues, greys, like this little peachy colour, and there's some cream in there as well. So that one's dried beautifully as well. Happy with that. Again, small cells. But the cells that are there are really, really pretty. I'm going to, well, I have mixed my pouring medium teensy wincy little bit thinner today instead of my 60% glue I've gone 55% just drop that a little bit and I've increased the water so from 40% water up to 45% water so a little bit thinner just to see what's going on um, so that's the paint I'm using today the Montmartre um, the teal I made myself, it's just green and blue mixed together. That's the turquoise, that's the dark green, and this one, what's that one called? It is, um, emerald green, although it's not very emerald looking, is it? Nope. Oh, now I've also got some new canvases. This is a 30 centimeter square, 12 inch. It's a deep one. I actually didn't want a deep one, but I wanted the, the 30 centimeter square ones. But you could, well, Mont might have only got these deep ones. So that is what I've got. And I'm going to do two flip cups. Right, so we'll get started. I'll put my spot on treadmill silicone in each. I don't think I'll do the whites though, because they're my opaque colors. And I'll do three drops. In the others one two three I've got 50 grams of pouring medium and 50 grams of paint so that's a hundred and I like to do one drop per 30 grams or one drop per ounce sort of roughly so that's why I decided on three drops stir it up really well I don't know I just seem to think that some of my my previous pours have just the cells have been a little on the small side to what I would normally get. Don't know why. It's the same glue that I bought. I bought so much glue ages ago, like last year. I've still got so much left. Um, I've used the Elmer's Glue All for these, but you can use school glue. You can use craft glue. As long as it's a white craft glue, it should be fine. Um, I've tried the clear glue as well. That seems to work okay. Just don't use a wood glue. Look, they're all a little bit different. You know, some will be thicker than others. So you might just have to have a little practice with the one that you've got, just until you get your consistency right. It's it's really not that much to do with the pouring medium you use, um, except for Floetrol, because Floetrol's an entity on its own. Um, but it's more about the consistency. But let me just take my glove off here and see if I can show you the consistency. There's a little mound on a mound. One, two, three. The little ribbon that I do like that, it should be gone in three seconds. One, two, three. So if it's still hanging around, one, two, three, then you think, oh, maybe it's a little bit too thick. You could add a little splash of water. Um, or if you're 
ribbon's gone in like a second then it's too thin and you might want to add some more paint all right oh that'll do it'll do I don't want to thin it down too much you know I've got the extra water in there to start with so we'll see how we go right some white not sure how many layers we'll get maybe three and as always I go light dark light dark when I'm layering there's no point putting these two colors next to each other because you're not even going to see the cells It'll just be like a blob. You want to do light dark so that you can see. Maybe you'll get a light ring around a dark cell. Or maybe you'll get um, a dark ring around a light cell. You just have to wait and see. It depends on what your paints are. Whether they're opaque or transparent or semi-transparent. will determine what your cells are going to be. I think these are pretty much all... Uh, I know the white's opaque. These two dark ones will be semi-transparent. Probably the light green because it's got so much white in it, you know, to lighten it, it's probably an opaque as well. Because when they make colours, they start with, you know, their dark one, they add white until they've got their lighter shades. So I'm assuming that it is an opaque as well. Might have enough for three layers. And turquoise, this is just the normal turquoise, haven't done anything to it. Actually, I don't know if I have enough for three layers. Might have end up with different colours in them. Because it doesn't feel as if I've got that much left. So what I might have to do is put, I'll put the other white on top of that one because I haven't got enough for two cups. And then we'll alternate the colours. We won't have both the same colours in the same cups. Alright, so you've got white, you can have the rest of this white. half layers and I'm going to flip from the inside out with my cups I don't like flipping into the center because if you get like a, a messy kind of a end which you can do from your cups it's in the middle so you're better off having it on the outside so you can have your dark teal in that one and then I'll put the light teal on that one and then the other cup can have the dark green and the light green so I might have one cup that's a little bit more teal and the other cup's a little bit more green eh? we shall see what happens stack my cups up okay pretty full cups these so yeah, I was telling you, um, I had 100 grams of paint in each cup. That's 600 grams. I probably only needed 500 grams really for this size canvas, but it's got the deep side. So I thought, oh, I'll just make up 600. You know, I'd rather have a little bit more than not enough. This means it's easier to spread to your edges, you know, without overstretching everything. If you've got a little bit more paint to play with. So if you're unsure, just add a little bit of extra. Just makes it that little bit easier to stretch your paint out over the edges without overstretching your cells and losing your composition. I'm just gonna make sure we're still taping. Yep, we are. And last but not least, I always end up with more paint in my first cup than my second cup. Okay, 
and now we're done. I didn't spray these cups either with silicone oil like normally I do, but I just thought I've got such a lot of paint. We don't need that extra little bit of help to release it all. Let me just wipe my hands because I'm a grot. Paint everywhere. Okay. And we'll flip these over. Mm, actually, I might do them. I don't know. I'm going to put them like that first. And then. Maybe I'll do that way. A little bit further distance, isn't it? <laughs> than that. We shall see. I've got my corner catcher ready. Just a piece of cardboard that I've folded in half. That's all it is, nothing special. All right. Hope these colours are nice together. I, I've done a lot of, you know, blues together, blue and turquoise. Never done teal and green, I don't think. I don't think I have anyway. I must have at some stage. All right. Here we go. Let's flip this one. Let's move you out of the way for a minute. Let's try and spread that out a little bit. Yeah, dripped in the middle. <laughs> That's where you try not to drip in the middle. Put the excess on your corners like that. And I'm going to turn you around. I can't flip away from myself. Whoops, whoops, fluff. All right, now, here we go. A little blob of white there in the middle. <laughs> I guess, you know, I could have just dragged down and dragged down, then you get your, your stripey in the middle, which is fine, but just thought I'm doing a square canvas let's just change it up a little bit and see what happens I'm just going to kind of break up this white here though all right now let's move it around a little bit Don't want to lose too much, so use my corner catcher, push it to the corner, push it back. Go right around so you don't drip anything. All right. Back to that corner. Back. And I'll turn it around. Seems more green than it is blue. At the moment it is anyway. All right, here we go. Into that corner. Back to the middle. And then take your corner catcher away. Last corner. Back to the middle. Now normally I would torch earlier, but I just wanted to cover the whole thing because I've got plenty of paint. It's a little bit thinner, so that I'll cover the whole thing first, then torch, and then tilt. All right, let's torch. Very bubbly. I only just made up this pouring medium. And because it's a little bit thinner, I'm sort of expecting the cells to kind of be a bit bigger to begin with, hopefully. I've mixed it that little bit thinner. Hopefully the cells will be a little bit bigger to start with. Just taking my time. Don't want to get too close. You know, I don't like Cell City and Caterpillars if I get too close. And round and round. Keep it going. Don't get too close. You can always come back again. Popping some bubbles. Got a bit close there. <laughs> and I will tip off this little white T 
tail thingy there. And hopefully try and bring some of the blue down and get rid of a little bit more of the green. Light shining in my eyes, that ring light that's above me. Oh, it's a bit glary. Couldn't see properly. Yeah, so just take your time with your torching, you know. You've gone through, you've gone to so much trouble buying your canvas, preparing it, mixing your pouring media, mixing your paint. Tipped it all out. The last thing you want to do is over torch now. So be really, really careful. It's the most important part, this, the torching. It'll make or break your painting. Trust me. Just go slow. And you can always like stretch it out now and then come back and, and um, torch again. Right, so I'm going to take that little corner off there first and probably some of that and then we'll see what it looks like. See, I've got plenty of paint there. Okay. That looks better already. Now I'm going to give it another little torch. Just in the the bit of white there. So I want this to be really pretty. I'm taking my time. Your cells will pop up and they'll they'll kind of stretch anyway. So even if you just let them pop up and then wait for them to do their thing, they'll they'll stretch anyway. Now I want to get, try and get rid of a lot of this green. I like the blue better. I don't know. Green tends to take over a bit, doesn't it? Just so that I've got half blue and half green. So I'm gonna, have I got my sides? I haven't got my corners covered just yet. I'm not used to doing these huge sided canvases. So I'm gonna walk the paint left and right, left and right, so that I can get my cells to be round. And there's not much going on over here in this corner. So I'll probably get some of that off first because it's quite a, a boring little corner over there. Now I would like to get that blob off and I think I've got enough paint on the surface that I can get him off so let's try. Back and forth, back and forth as you aim down there we go there he's gone. Now we'll walk it back again. Well, that's opened up my blue. I've got more blue there now. Now it's more sort of equal, isn't it? Cells aren't huge. Um, if I had torched earlier before I covered the whole canvas, then they'd be much bigger now. But kind of have to decide if you want maybe smaller cells that are pretty like really nice shape if you're if you're the sort of person that tends to overstretch your canvas or overstretch your cells when you're tilting you might want to do as I've done and cover the whole thing first and then torch um, that way you you have less risk of overstretching everything So now I'm just going to, um, I don't know, I'm going to try and get that corner off and just sort of stretch the cells a little bit more. So I'm just going to walk it back and forth. There goes that corner. Do you see how easy that was? But make sure that if you're going to tilt one way, you go the opposite way as well. Otherwise, you your cells end up getting kind of long and skinny, which you don't want. I'm swaying my whole body. <laughs> All right, let's open them up a little bit more. I like it. It's like an inlet of water up against the 
the ground, the grass. Alrighty. I think I'll call that one done, you guys. What do you think? I like it. And I do, I must say, I do like my pouring medium that little bit thinner. My cells did pop up nice and easily. The rings are nice and clear. I'll take you down in a minute for a close-up. I'm just going to do my corners. They're huge. I'm not used to having such big corners. Put the paint at the top there, let it run down on its own to make its own pattern. Don't kind of squish it. So it'll, no, don't get your finger in there and, and rub it. Just let it fall down on its own, make its own little pretty pattern. It's prettier than um, if you get like a smudgy, smudgy look if you've done that with your fingers. All right, a little bit more just there. See, I don't know if you can see the sides there, but it gives you a really pretty, nice little pretty edge there. And again there, see that? I don't know if you can see the corners. I'll try and remember to show you, I'll take you down for a close up and show you the, the edges. Make sure then you wipe the bottom like that because the weight of the paint on the sides is going to want to keep pulling all the other paint down so go around a few times take off your drips and uh, that'll just stop the paint from wanting to pull the rest of the sides down and then you end up with cells on the sides of your canvas too that's really pretty I like it teals and greens hey I really like this one. This is like one of my favourite ever. Look at the difference. Like when you put a lime in there, it just goes pop. That pop of lime. So don't be scared to use, you know, pop colours. Your blues and greens and that pop of lime. Really pretty. This is nice too. It's just, um, it's in it just a more sort of blended colour. All right, let's go down for a close-up. Oh, I was going to show you the sides, hey? See, the corners still look pretty. The cells are obviously stretched because they've stretched down the side. And I'm not used to using these big, thick-sided canvases. But we've got some really pretty cells. I'm going to see if I can do that. It's a better zoom. Over onto that corner. Really pretty, hey? I love the white against that dark colour. See the white rings around that teal? It's really pretty. Such a lot to look at, isn't there? Such a lot. We've got those beautiful white cells there against the blue background. So pretty. I'll come around here. Oops, there's that awful ring light getting in my way. <laughs> There's just no way around it. It has to be there. This is a really pretty corner. Look, we've got blue with the white rings over on the left. And then in the middle there, we've got the green with the white rings. That's the opaque white dropping down around 
the semi-transparent color. The semi-transparent one is lighter in weight. It pops up in the middle and the opaque color drops around it, makes that ring around the cell. So pretty. Alrighty. Hope you've enjoyed that. Is it good to see a flip cup pour again? <laughs> Have you missed them? Oh my gosh. I'll try and do a few more for you. But uh, let me know if there's one that you want me to try, you know, colour schemes or whatever. Let me know. Flip cup wise. Or maybe another swipe. You let me know what you'd like me to do. And I will try and accommodate. Alrighty. That's me for now. And um, thanks for watching. <laughs> Hope you enjoyed it. I'll see you real soon for the next one. Okay, bye for now.